Okay. Are you guys able to see my screen? Just. Yes, yes. Okay, okay yes. cool. Okay, so I, I don't know what to put on the title slide, but what is design thinking? This is this is this is as close to a 15 minute crash course as I'll get. There's obviously a whole lot more to it, you know, that um, you could explore and that is there to explore that um, I can't get into because of time constraints. But um, this is definitely just a crash course, and I just want to leave that up as a disclaimer. So I'm going to start by telling you guys a story. And this is the premise. So um, just a quick show of hands, if you would, or like drop it in chat. How many of you guys have heard of IDEO? Like, do you know of the company IDEO? Mm -hmm. OK. So for those of you that aren't aware of what IDEO is, it's um, a company that kind of pioneered design thinking. And they pretty much shaped the modern design world as it is today. Um, and they are huge. Like They are probably the world's biggest design consultancy. They um, have been so impactful in like spreading the word about design thinking and getting it out into the world. So back, I should have I should have noted down the date and I didn't. But a couple of decades ago, they were involved in um, a project with a pediatric hospital where they were trying to redesign an MRI machine for them. So obviously this is a huge project, right? Because they're redesigning an MRI machine that this hospital is going to be putting a ton of money into. Um, and so they, you know, they went through the process. They made sure to speak to like the technicians that were operating it, that had to maintain it, you know, the people that were manufacturing it. So they they spoke to all these people. They um, worked on it for months, and then they came together with this amazing MRI machine design that um, was up for several awards. It apparently won the Oscar Award of Design. So it was a big deal. Um, so they then went back to the hospital once these machines were out and in the hospital. And they were talking to these, you know, um, the people that were operating the machine and stuff. And they were like, hey, guess guess what? Like, we designed an MRI machine and like, it's really cool, you know? It's up for a design award and stuff. So they were really proud of it. Except these operators don't take it out because patients are coming in, patients have to be scanned. And uh, these people can't quite be around when patients are being scanned. So they made to wait outside. And while they're waiting outside, patients start to walk in, except it wasn't quite as clinical as a patient. It was a young girl with her parents. This is a pediatric hospital. These MRI machines are meant for children. And their target audience that they never once thought about was an eight-year-old girl who was terrified and she was crying. She was sobbing. She was like, I don't want to do this. It's a big hunk of white metal. It's really, really scary. You need to stay still for 20 minutes while these, this machine makes all these noises around you. And they never once had stopped to think about what is the actual experience of this eight-year-old girl that's supposed to be sitting in this machine? So now they went back and they're like, you know, we messed up. Like, this is not a good design. I mean, yeah, we won awards, but we didn't actually make life better for anybody. Now, obviously, they can't redesign the whole thing. They don't have, like, the millions all the time to put into this whole upheaval. And so they thought about, well, what is it actually that these kids need? I mean, they want to be not scared. They want to not go into this clinical machine that's like big and white and noisy. And so they, instead of changing the way the machine looked and the way the machine was manufactured, they changed everything around it to create basically what you see on the screen right now. So instead of changing the machine, they changed the experience. They made it so that kids could choose whether they wanted their MRI experience to be them on a spaceship exploring space or them being pirates on the seas. And so it was such a simple change. It just involved painting the walls differently, you know, putting, in, putting some paint over a little bit of the equipment. And they created an experience for kids that they were excited to go to. The next time they were like, you know what, I did space this time, I'm gonna do pirates next time. And it becomes an experience that they were looking forward to that brought them joy. So this whole thing, this idea that design isn't just scientific, you're essentially, as Karthik mentioned, empathizing with people to create experiences for them that are positive and better than what they were before. This is essentially what design thinking is. So what is it? This is the official, this is the official definition. It's a design methodology that provides a solution-based approach to solving problems. I've never really liked these definitions. Um, but what is what makes it um, the most useful is the second sentence in that it is ex extremely good at tackling complex problems that are ill-defined or unknown. So if you have a, you know, if you if you start out by saying, I want this website to have 30% more clicks, then design thinking isn't gonna help you. 
you have a very specific problem on hand. But if your issue is something like what we are facing today with COVID, which is, you know, people aren't quite experiencing it as they should, that then becomes a problem that's a lot more not very well defined, which means there's so much potential for exploration with design thinking, which is hopefully what we're going to get into today. So over the next couple of slides, I'm going to very quickly run us through the process that we're going to follow. And then we'll also go through the timeline in the sheet that Karthik sent out. So the first step, as Karthik mentioned, is empathy. Empathy is really, really important. You want to put yourself in the shoes of the people that are going to be using what you design and make sure that you really understand what their issues are. There are designers that like put themselves into the ICU to see what the ICU experience is like. And for us, it doesn't have to be that extreme because maybe what, what we're doing is going to Carpet's website and thinking, well, if I don't know anything about you know, this field, if I don't know anything about what, what is in front of me going forward, and if I'm scared, what am I feeling? And where am I gonna click? And like, what am I thinking? What issues am I seeing right in front of me? What confuses me? So those are the kind of questions that are gonna start giving you insights into, okay, this seems to be a problem. This doesn't seem clear to me. The next step is to define these problems. So you're taking all the things that you learned from this empathy session, and then you want to start analyzing them, synthesizing them, and then putting down these observations as well. This is a problem that we can solve. Now, one thing worth noting here is that you want to keep these problem statements more human-centered and not like data-centered. So like I mentioned, you don't want to say, well, how do I get 30% more clicks on this button? You would say, well, how do I lead people to this button easier? You know, that then becomes a human-centered problem, which means you can give it a human-centered solution. Mm -hmm. The third step is ideation. Now, this is brainstorming time. It's time to go crazy. Like, It's very easy to kind of limit ourselves by thinking, well, this is not possible. Or like, this may not quite be feasible. Maybe we shouldn't get into this. You know, it's a little too big for us. Well, absolutely no such thing. Just a um, fun story is that when... Airbnb was a failing startup and they were making barely $200 a week. The point that started changing their lives wasn't code as they, as they were thinking. It wasn't a more optimized you know, process. It wasn't something cheap. It was the fact that they flew out to New York to everywhere that they had listings on their website with a professional DSLR camera and took better pictures. That was their solution. So basically, <laughs> go wild. There are no limits to where you... I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. I had an alarm ring. Anyway, brainstorming. Don't set any limits on this. Limits are for later. So right now, keep your thinking cap on. Keep those thoughts going. And then when, when you're done, you want to prototype them. So prototypes aren't scary. They can be anything. You can literally, if you're maybe prototyping an app, you can just draw six rectangles and then write something into each rectangle. And that's a prototype. You know, if you're making, if you're prototyping a product, then you make a cardboard cutout of it. That's a mock-up. So essentially, prototyping is really, really easy, but very, very, very important because you can't quite tell people what's... If you're sharing something with a user, you can't immediately tell them what your thought is, but you can show them something and say, well, this is what I'm thinking. So would you take a look at this and then tell me what you think? So this forays into our next step, which is testing. And... Um, this is probably one of the most important steps of the whole process where you're essentially taking your prototypes, you're taking your ideas, and then you're testing them with the same users that you were empathizing with to make sure that it makes sense and that they're able to process it the same way that you were and um, that it is an effective solution. Now, I did present this as a linear five-step thing because that's the way we'll be thinking about it over the next couple of hours. But honestly, each step is just a tool you can go back and forth as you need to. You can go all the way to the end and then go back to the beginning because it didn't work and that's fine. This whole process is so messy and iterative that, I mean, that's honestly the beauty of it. That's why you get solutions that work out of design thinking because the whole thing is not linear at all. You can go back and forth as much as you need to in order to get to a solution that people love. Um, so yeah. Honestly, that's all I have to present formally. I have a couple more slides that I can go into maybe, but um, I'm not going to right now, just to not overwhelm. Um, I have included in this, I'll share this presentation with you guys and I have included this incredible link. 
um, which has pretty much eight case studies um, of how various companies of various sizes have involved design thinking in the way that they you know, think about their growth, the way they think about their future, and how it's helped them um, create solutions the way they have. So starting from Uber Eats, Airbnb, you know, um, even government organizations that have been helping kids with disabilities and stuff, everybody can use design thinking and it has impacted everybody positively. So I'm gonna stop off here and um, share this presentation with you guys, just so, am I still sharing my screen? Yes, you are. Yeah, okay. So it was a very, very, very brief introduction into the kind of five-step process that we're going to follow today. Um, I think I'll hand over to Karthik now so that we can get into the problem statement and our actual flow for the day. Um, so yeah, just I'll share this with you guys so you have reference going forward. All right, yeah. Before I, I jump to the problem <laughs> statement, Kavya, if you can tell, tell us anything that you have created by applying design thinking, just one example. Uh, That's a good question. Nice. Um, you know, suddenly I've blanked out on all the design <laughs> projects I've ever done. But, oh, I can tell you one. Um, so this is um, an example that I, again, use a lot in interviews. So like, it's just on top of my mind. Um, it's a project that I did with during an internship where we were working on a personal protective device for women. So it was a small piece of jewelry that they would wear around their wrist and the associated mobile app. Um, now, obviously, like the whole the whole principle that this design firm followed that I interned with was very linear. Um, with their design process, they were like, well, this works, this works, this material, this cost, this manufacturing. But with this project, we realized that there was a whole lot more empathy that had to be involved because it's not just like, you know, a company that's like sitting in their office and typing away at a laptop and using this. It was if a woman was in distress, if she was being followed, if she was being chased, if she was being you know, if she felt unsafe, if she was in a dark corner surrounded by people, whatever, um, that would be the moment that this product came into play. And that would be the moment when this product was used. And so the emotional state of our users was so different from our emotional state sitting in the office. And so we really had to like put our, you know, thinking caps on. We had like 30 year old guys, you know, 45 year old guys that were in on this project and that had to like really put on their, their emotion caps and think, well, if I was a woman that felt unsafe, like in the dark, late at night, whatever, and I was using this product, how much would I be able to do? What, what exactly would I be feeling and thinking? And how would I then interact with this product, with the app? Like how many screens can we have, et cetera? Like it made such a huge difference to the way we approach the project. And that's probably like the most important and human-centered project I've ever done. Um, so yeah, that would probably be the example I cite. <laughs> Awesome. Great. And thank you. You're the first guest who has ever joined a hackathon. So uh, <laughs> it was very informative personally for me, and I'm sure more people relate to it. At least Venkat will now start understanding what I mean by do some customer discovery and become a dentist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, guys. Uh, so very quickly on, on what the problem statement is as a detailed word talk, you may have had the chance to quickly kind of brief run through it, but I'll also give a verbal voiceover. Uh, what's happened in the past is we have designed a few products like a mock test and an uh, online video course. Now, obviously, the inspiration for these mock tests and video courses came not from our heads, but from our competitors. And that's a typical design process. We look at what our competitors do and we want to mimic the same thing, put it at a cheaper price like Indians do and, and get the market to ourselves. However, what happens is when you, when you design a product like that, you don't really think about uh, something that people really want and want to continue interacting with. So the other products we designed, and the market is witness to this, like a resume builder tool, like a SOP builder tool, are actually kick-ass products. If you think about it like an engineer applying to MBA school, you will 100% use it because it's the best deal in the market. However, uh, it wasn't exactly designed with the dentist, around the dentist, in their shoes, which is why product adoption, in my perspective, is largely been low. You can also, like Venkat would 100% say, market, he would say marketing is bad. Yes, marketing is bad, but also we didn't create a product that, that they really felt and they really asked for. We created a product and then we tried to dump it on them. Against this scenario, we now are in a state where we want to create products that even live after us, that do not expect our team in India to stay up all night and provide one-on-one -on -one coaching services. We want to create an asset in some form or feature that can sustain itself and provide value to our end users. 
with that perspective in mind, you're going to get into two breakout sessions, each for half an hour, um, and start thinking about what, yeah, sorry, Kavya, I think you kind of changed the format a bit, so. Yeah, I edited just a little. Uh, so yeah. we have the first breakout session for half an hour, and then the second one for 45 minutes, because we need a little longer. Sounds good, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, I kind of gave the idea that you need to design a product for Cap It Simplifies users, which are dental applicants applying to the US. Uh, we have different teams. In each team, there is one person who knows a little bit about dentistry and the application process. And then there's somebody who knows a little bit about what Cap It Simplified can do in terms of uh, what we already have. And there's one, one stranger. So like Shruti is relatively new. Kavya is again, stranger. Sandhya knows a little bit from past. And in a year's time, definitely Cap It has evolved. Uh, so that's the way we've kind of organized the team. I'm going to be like an alibi for Nora speaking from our experience as if I'm a dentist. Uh, so let's, these are the teams that we'll, we'll go through. Now I'll just hand over to Kavya to explain what the timeline looks like and mm -hmm. what we're gonna do from here. Okay, so um, the first half an hour was just got done. Uh, so for the next half an hour when we're in our breakout rooms, we're gonna kind of get into the first two steps of that five-step process that I explained. So we're gonna to try to empathize with our users, which is gonna be easy because we do have our end users in a team with us. Um, and we're gonna to try to define and reframe the problem spaces that were mentioned in this document. So um, our goal over this half an hour is just to, like it, it's harder than it seems. Uh, we wanna create an actual problem statement that going into the second half, we can start brainstorming on. Um, if you guys finish early and if you're satisfied with the problem statement that you've made, feel free to start brainstorming you know, in the first half an hour session itself. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get that done. And then we're gonna take a quick 15 minute session where in these three teams, each of us get about five minutes to present the problem statement that we've come up with and just have a very quick discussion where we get feedback on it. Does it make sense? Does it not? What issues do you potentially see with it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we then take a break and then we get into our second breakout sessions where we start doing the, you know, actual, um, the brunt of this work, which is ideation and then making mockups and prototypes. So we then, you know, go crazy with brainstorming, um, do all the thinking up that we want. Uh, we then get into a half an hour presentation session where I guess it doesn't have to be a formal presentation. You just take the mockups that you've made and then tell the story that you've created around them. So what is this experience that you've designed for users and how is it going to work? Finally, we'll have a reflection where this is almost the testing phase where we, once we've shared our, our ideas out, we get feedback on them and then we decide how to move forward. So. Sounds good. Okay, so the first thing is framing the problem, defining the problem for half an hour. Um, yeah. And in, in a typical design thinking exercise, I think it would be like a bunch of people speaking to the end user and trying to frame the problem. So think of it like that. Think of the dentist as your end user and you are interviewing them to frame the problem for them. Do not like ask them to frame the problem and just write it down on a, on a slide. Okay, think of it like that. Uh, we also have one person who's joined us. Kashish, are you with us? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I can replace Kavya with Kashish and keep Kavya as a floater so that you can go into any room you want, Kavya. Yeah, sounds good. And I've also given you um, the co-host access for you to go to any breakout room you need. Uh, I'll be creating the breakout rooms right now. Before I start the breakout rooms, are there any questions that you want to clear with Kavya? Uh, and and like, before we go in and be confused. <laughs> no questions. All right. Cool. Um, um, can I just say one more thing before we break off into our rooms? Um, if you're confused, you're meant to be. Um, this process is honestly, it's confusing whether you've been doing this for five minutes or you know five years. Um, it never really becomes clear. It's the whole process is meant to be messy and it's meant to be kind of confusing. You're meant to kind of feel your way through every single project by itself. So be comfortable if you feel confused. That's how you're meant to feel. Just wanted to drop that in. <laughs> Super confused now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, welcome right, to Kavya. the design world. <laughs> Sure. Please, please come into our rooms once in a while and just kind of help us navigate. Sure. Uh, if we're stuck. All right, guys. All the best. First 30 minutes. Define the problem statement. We'll reconvene in half an hour.
Oh, actually, we can stop recording. <laughs>